if you've clicked on this video, it means you're ready. You're ready to cut out the deed or someone has carried out the deed on you and you want them to pay back. Or if you're here for education purposes, you're also in the right place. We shall see and understand why people like Judas Iscariot we are the worst betrayers and how the best betrayers execute their plans and get away with it. But to be the master of this craft, you need to know the following. 1. Why do you have to do it or why do people do it? 2. Which types of people you should betray or who is likely to betray you? 3. Which type of people you should never betray at whatever cost? And finally, we shall see how to have a successful execution. With the new growth and change of the world, the Western values of individualism and individualistic tendencies have led to the environment where people do not care about the collective good, but only themselves and saving their skins. People only care about you if it only benefits them. When trouble comes, they won't remember all the things you did for them. You don't believe me? Ask some bankman of the FTX saga. This guy literally sold his soul to provide for his girlfriend and even misused his own company's finances to start another company for his girl. But when trouble started, guess who was the informant? Yes, the same girl. And this is not a separate case. The whole world has completely changed. If you want to put your back for someone else, good luck bro. They will not remember you as you wrote in your own grave. This is however not a new trend as people have been selfish since the dawn of time. However, the individualistic traits were only secondary to the group well-being as we needed each other to survive but as the world evolved we became more and more independent hence the habit of selfishness and greediness became prevalent like the story of a man called Arnold Ruthstein who had a colleague called Dutch Sweets both business colleagues Arnold borrowed money to Dutch but Dutch didn't pay back Arnold threatened to report him for tax evasion but instead of Dutch paying back, he had Arnold killed. What of Scar and his greed for power? So he betrayed his brother Mufasa and his nephew Simba. Don't forget Queen Mary of Scott, who was jealous of her cousin Queen Elizabeth and plotted to overthrow her. There are very many countless examples of people betraying their fellows. The people you should never betray. One, family, two, friends, three, partners. No matter what life throws at you, never betray any of these people. You don't believe me? Let's take an example. Our good old villain, Mr. Judas. He betrayed his friend and the person who was there for him all along. How did it end? What of Mark Anthony, the man who betrayed his wife and children for another half old Cleopatra? What do you think happened? There are a magnitude of the same examples in history and even today's examples. There are some unwritten rules on never to betray your friends, family, and partner alike in business and other endeavors. And get my word properly, I said friends, not colleagues, or people you know. And I said family, not relatives. It's your job to figure out the difference to avoid a statement like, my brother betrayed me. Your biological brother can also be a relative. And since I have highlighted people you should never betray, these are the people you should betray. One, relatives, two colleagues, three others. These can be like former mates, i.e. classmates, or others. There are many reasons why you should betray or be ready to betray these people as they are the most people to be jealous of you and at the same time know more about you. A best betrayer is the one where no one will ever know it was you or ever connect the dots back to you. All the examples we see were failures for the fact that we know the, pa the pa pa perpetrators. To have a successful mission, first you need to have the calculation. One, is the plan worth it? The best strategy is not to go at war at all. Even when you win, it comes at cost. Keeping your hand clean is the best strategy. Two, if you find your only alternative is to go to war or you shall die, then it's time to prepare. First, know your enemy. Study his weaknesses and strength. What advantages do they have over you? How strong are they? 
and the tools at their disposal. Is this your boss or your competitor? And how are you going to completely decapitate them? Then, turn guns to yourself. 3. What partner do you have? This is a war. You can't fight the war alone and you win. You need infantry, air superiority, you need marines, you need propaganda, you need everything. Maybe for your case you need to hack their phones and get those nudes. Check your boss's accounting fiascos. Everyone has it at the secret. You have to get it, dear, or else it will be your head on the guillotine. Ask Maria Antonia. Planning phase. Plan all the way to the end. Plan for the consequences, obstacles, contingencies, and all other backup plans. Don't be ruled by your heart. Be ruled by your head. Don't have vague plans as it won't make you reach your concrete goal and it will lead your plan to backfire. Once it backfires, things will be very dangerous for you. The execution. This is the masterpiece. This is the do or die. All your plans have been in order. It's time to strike. And here is the manifesto. 1. We need to crush our enemy once and for all. We need to decimate them. We have to decapitate them. We have to finish them once and forever. If we don't, they will revenge and they won't have mercy on us when that time comes. So, we should avoid the pity or mercy on them. Remember, we have humiliated them. It's their ego that will force them to retaliate. 2. We have to be swift in execution. The trap of attribution is a dangerous place as it drains all our resources at the same time giving time to our enemy to recover. We don't need that. If we can win the war in one battle, let it be only one battle, not two, not three. Bring all the firepower you have and focus on the enemy. Spare nothing and hit it once and leave. Remember, the remnants of an enemy can be active like those of a disease or fire. Hence, we should exterminate them completely. One should never ignore an enemy. Knowing him to be weak, he becomes dangerous in the due course, like the spark of fire in a haystack. Katulia said, These are all the plans that you need to execute and also have in your mind as you're executing. Thank you for watching up to the end. We really appreciate and we are trying to improve our quality of our videos. Kindly join our channel and also share your ideas that maybe we can always discuss about. Thank you. See you.